If you look closely at the trunks of eucalyptus trees on the eastern coast of Australia, then you may notice some rather strange markings. These anonymous looking squiggles are the work of one of Australia's most remarkable animals, and one that, in spite of being rather common, is seldom seen as it mostly emerges under the cover of darkness. But if you are lucky, especially after a heavy bout of rain, then you may just notice one of these enigmatic little creatures during the day as it makes its way back to shelter in the undergrowth. And here is the culprit behind the markings. Meet Triboniophorus graphi. Triboniophorus graphi is commonly known as the red triangle slug because it has a triangle on it, which is red, and it's a slug. I'm sure that explanation was entirely necessary. It occurs along much of Eastern Australia, including in urban areas, although as aforementioned, their cryptic lifestyles ensure that encounters with humans are rare. The species belongs to a family of slugs called the Athoracophoridae, or leaf-veined slugs. This is because of the distinctive texture on their dorsal surface, which resembles the patterns formed by the veins of a leaf. Another distinguishing feature of the family Athoracophoridae is the reduction of the mantle, which in most slugs is a prominent saddle-shaped structure into a small triangular patch. And of course, it is especially noticeable in Triboniophorus graphi, as the red outline adds quite a lot of emphasis. emphasis. Oh, what was that? With a maximum length of around 14 centimetres, Triboniophorus graphi is quite often referred to as Australia's largest native terrestrial slug. That, however, is somewhat dated as that title is now held by another species in the same genus, which has yet to be given a proper name and is endemic to Mount Caputar in New South Wales. These bizarre slugs are most often observed foraging on the trunks of trees, where they graze upon lichen and algae by scraping it off its surface with a tongue-like structure called a radula. It is this activity that leaves behind their distinctive trails, the only sign most people will ever see of these amazing creatures' existence. Across its rather broad geographic range, Triboniophorus graphi exhibits an astounding degree of variation in colour. Among the most striking are the vivid yellow versions that occur around Cunningham's Gap. Juveniles, however, all seem to be rather similar in appearance regardless of location with a translucent, greyish body and several longitudinal dark stripes. From the moment I found out that these slugs existed, I was in awe, and a rather substantial portion of my childhood was spent trying to locate one of these creatures in the wild a task that proved to be much more difficult than I could have ever imagined. It didn't take me long at all to find their feeding trails, and honestly it was quite a shock just how common they were. Eucalyptus trees nearly everywhere I visited seemed to have them, so surely the slugs themselves would be quite easy to find. Well, that was where I was wrong. 
In all the endless hours I spent out in the bush, not one of these slugs revealed itself to me. And as fruitless search after fruitless search went by, Triboniophorus graphi began to feel like more of a fantasy than a real animal something that only existed in photographs taken by people who had been more fortunate than myself. And then, over a year later, blind, dumb luck came to the rescue. After absent-mindedly nudging over an old, rusty tin can, I noticed a strange blob attached to its underside. It was mostly covered in soil and leaf litter, that was, except for a very small patch through which a hint of vivid red could be discerned. And something told me I knew what this mysterious blob was. After gently brushing away more of the debris that encrusted the object, a bright red triangle was revealed. And there, right before my eyes, was the very creature that had eluded me for all that time. It was honestly rather amusing to think back on all that time spent combing the undergrowth looking ceaselessly for these animals without any results, only for my quarry to finally reveal itself after I kicked over a scrap of metal. And this would not be the last time that blind luck would lead me to this elusive jewel of the Australian bush. My second encounter with one of these slugs was every bit as astoundingly unexpected as the first. On a rainy night at school camp, I was feeling my way through a dense thicket of shrubbery, when my hand came into contact with something very slimy. And after flicking my torch on, I saw to my utter disbelief that I had placed my hand right on top of another red triangle slug. Thankfully the slug was completely uninjured by the ordeal, and after a lengthy amount of time observing it, I let it go on its own way. The individual in this video was found under less extraordinary circumstances than the first two, though it was still an incredible surprise to see. It was making its way back down a tree trunk to shelter, and I'll admit to uh, helping it on the way, which to the slug would have probably felt like hitting the hyperdrive. But there were quite a lot of kids around, and a red triangle slug on a tree right next to the walking track would have been a pretty easy thing to notice. As the slug disappeared under a log, I began to think back on the endless hours I spent searching for this very animal. More than perhaps any other creature, Triboniophorus graphi encouraged me to head out and explore the wilderness that Australia has to offer. Seems rather strange to say that I have been led on such a tremendous journey by a slug, but so be it. And we come to the end. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to check out some of my other content, and of course don't forget to subscribe, it really helps out and I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you all very much for watching, that is it from me and I'll see you again very soon.